Hi, this is Courtney Boggs with iRace TV. I'm here with Shane Carson. Hi, Shane. Hi, Courtney. So you've been around the racing world for a while, you know, been on many different sides of it. How have you seen racing change over the years? Well, you know, when the when the dollars got up and the uh, sponsorship drove the uh, the success of a team, it kind of got away from the ability of the drivers. I don't like that as well anymore. I kind of like it to be the, the, you know, put it in the driver's hands, let them guys go out and, and uh, do a better job and win the race. But now it seems like it's more about money. And how did you get into racing? Well, my dad ran the track here at Oklahoma City uh, at the Fairgrounds Speedway in, in Oklahoma City. And, and he ran it from 1957 until he passed away in 1991. So, you know, me growing up around it, I was selling programs. I was being one of those kids at the track that, uh, that, that watched it all. You know, so when I started racing in 1973, you know, I kind of had a pretty good idea on how to do it already. So I was, I was lucky because I, I had the, some good equipment and I'd been around it, so I was, I was pretty lucky right off the bat. And you've been promoting races for quite some time. You promoted races for 22 years. Yes. How have you seen that progress over the years? Well, that, uh, you know, again, the money had, had got up so high, you know, your, your purses got up, so you had to generate more income from sponsorships. You had to raise your ticket prices, which was never popular. But, you know, that was part of the putting on that type of show. It came in twice a year into the Oklahoma City market, and uh, I, w I wish we still had a track because I would probably still be doing it. But, uh, you know, but it was, it was a tough gig. It was, it was hard to make that, st that thing pay. You know, the first race I put on the purse was like $10,000. The last race that I put on the purse was about $50,000. It's a big increase. <laughs> not a lot of people remember the half mile track and not many people got to experience the half mile track at State Fair Speedway. Go ahead and take us back to those days and fill us in on how that was. You know, going, going out to the fairgrounds back in the 60s, you know, we were all just kids running around at the track and, and all, of the, all of our heroes were running on the half mile. You know, they didn't, you know we, we didn't pay much attention to the other races, but those guys on the half mile was was our, our heroes i mean they were and they were out there battling it out on that big track every friday night and it was it was not an easy track to run it was a high speed facility and uh a lot of those guys were uh you know probably not up for it but they learned to be you know for us as fans it didn't get any better than that i mean i like to i like to see cars going fast i know that people that uh that come out to races nowadays they have no idea, you know, it, it, the, the speed is so different from what it was then to what it is now at most tracks. Uh, down through the, through the 80s and 90s, you know, it was still, we were still having those big shows on the half mile and, you know, we only run them twice a year. So the people would come partly because they were going to see those cars running on the half mile and they would, they loved it. I mean, they just, uh, you know, I had more comments from, from promoting those races. You know, don't ever change it. Keep them on the big track. That's why we're here. You know, and then there's pros and cons to that. People like to like the short tracks because everybody's really tight and there's a lot of bumping and banging. You didn't really get to do that on the big track because the speed kind of kind of kept you from kept you apart a little bit. Um, in 2002, my last outlaw show that I put on it here in Oklahoma City, they did away with that half mile track, and I felt like that was part of what did away with that event. You know, it, it's of course, there's no track now, but in 2002, I felt like that was kind of the beginning of the end. I wanted to see the track as it was, as I remembered it when I was a kid, and it, and it changed. So it took away a lot of what I wanted to, to show people, you know, and, and I didn't get to do that after that. But, uh, but yeah, the Oklahoma City Half Mile has been, uh, people talk about it all over the country. What would you say are your top two, top three fondest memories of racing over the years? Probably um, on my sixth race that I ever raced uh, a car, right out here at the Fairgrounds Speedway in Oklahoma City, my sixth race in a car I won. I was, in, I was in a modified car and I was running on the quarter mile at the Fairgrounds, but that was as big as I needed to, to get. I thought that was, that was it. I mean, that was all I wanted to do. And, um, and that was in 1973. So then years later, I, I won a big race at Oklahoma City that was called a USAC NCRA Challenge. And that was a... That was a race that only came in here once a year. I didn't promote it. I actually just raced in it. Getting to win that was huge. That was, um, it was in, in uh, 1986, and it was a, a race that everybody around here wanted to win. The, the USAC drivers came from 
different parts of the country. They didn't like us beating them. So it was, it was a very uh, a hot, a hot event. Good, good for me to win. I actually won that on my birthday in 1986. Um, Another big win was uh, was at Eldora Speedway. They, when they first started paying big money, the, the very first 10000 to win race at Rossburg, Ohio, Eldora Speedway, Tony Stewart owns it now. I won that race in, in 1978. Didn't even know I was going to run it. I ended up in a car for, that somebody called me up, and I went up there and, won, and ran the race and won it. That was huge for me at that time. $10,000 in 1978. I went and bought a brand-new Z28, and I still have it sit in my garage right now so. that's wonderful <laughs> and how do you see racing progressing over the next five ten years well I, I still see the big races being big you know the Knoxville Nationals the races that you that, that have got a good hold on the uh, on the on the car count and on the crowd special events still do well I worry about weekly shows because you got to build a class and build some cars that are affordable to run you know you can't make them cars out there a fifty thousand dollar car running for, you know, a thousand dollars to win every night. You know, it's it's really hard to uh, to make sense of all that. So, I say build a class that that you can uh, that you can afford to run. You know, get a get a good car count back there and get a lot of people involved with it. I think that's the secret. Some great insight. And what are you doing now? What do you do that interests you nowadays? Well, I've got a couple little grandbabies that keep me busy. That's pretty good. I'm uh, I'm involved with the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame as a board of directors, so I'm I'm uh, and that's based out of Iowa. But we have meetings all over the country, and 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 what we do, we kind of go and and see how the uh, the racing's going in different areas of the country, and try to promote the museum in in Iowa. That's the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame. I'm still involved with that. I'm getting ready to go to Knoxville next month. Um, last week I raced a car for Smiley in, in uh, Elk City, Oklahoma. I hadn't raced in a year and a half or so or two. So that was fun. So I, I, I still get to get around racing, and, and it would be hard for me not to. That's wonderful. And it was great talking to you, and we hope to get to talk to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you, Courtney.